From the New York Post, BLM Global Network files $33 million lawsuit against group helping fund college protest. So talk about a real corruption race to the bottom. There's so many levels here. First, I thought the Palestine protesters, the college commies, that was all grassroots and organic. But surprise, surprise, the New York Post reported a month or two ago that Soros was largely behind the whole thing. And now BLM, who should have taken the W, right? I mean, you burned down cities across the country. You raised millions of dollars. You notoriously bought large mansions, but that just wasn't enough. My name's Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please. Come on, please. Because the algorithm is a beast and they really want me to stop, but it's not going to happen. So that would cost you nothing and it would help me a lot. But if you want to help me even more and spend a little bit of money, go ahead and buy my book, New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued on Amazon.com. That link will be in the description. They say a progressive nonprofit that has been shelling out cash to anti-Israel protest groups, which... And I've said this before, I don't. I truly don't think it's anti-Israel. They don't know what the hell's going on. They don't know their ass from their elbow. So you can say it's anti-Israel or it's anti-Semitic, but it's not. They're just weirdo brainwashed sheep trying to collect the money from the Soros organization, apparently. Uh, okay, okay. A progressive nonprofit that has been shelling out cash to anti-Israel protest groups is being sued by Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation for fraud and withholding more than $33 million in donations. A bombshell lawsuit claims. I mean, really? This is like Marilyn Mosby who wants to talk about, well, you know, they want to put me in jail. It's a political attack. You guys are talking about fraud? I mean, it, does the projection get any more glaring than this? Tides Foundation, which has managed hundreds of millions in donations for, pro, for progressive groups, since it was founded in 1976, has refused to honor its promises and continues to commandeer BLM GNF's donations, according to the 285-page lawsuit filed in California Superior Court, uh, Los Angeles County. Instead, Tides doled out an undisclosed amount of donations to a radical BLM breakaway group run by anti-police advocate Melina Abdullah, who lost a frivolous lawsuit against BLM GNF according to court papers and and an attorney for BLM GNF and this global network foundation or whatever I'm sure this is some weird loophole so they could say well uh we're not really affiliated with Black Lives Matter or there's another offshoot it's kind of like Tiffany Hinyard who says she has a, a charity called Tiffany Cares and then says oh no 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 they, they just use my name and image uh, but but I'm not really part of it. Like, who knows what the hell is going on with these weirdo communist grifters? Tides, a Los Angeles and San Francisco based nonprofit, acts as a fiscal sponsor, essentially a clearinghouse that collects donations for groups that may not have 501c3 tax exempt status. And there you have it. Right. Th these these weirdo shell corporations, these weird entities this fraud, this, I mean, these people are all absolute scam artists. How did this, ha how does this continue to happen? Right? I mean, they're literally, they terrorized the entire country for the better part of a year. And rather than just take the W and drink champagne poolside at the mansion, they want to come out more and, and, and sue for $33 million. In addition to BLM, GNF and other BLM groups, it manages donations for pro-Palestinian groups that have supported anti-Israel protests across the country. And there you have it again. People from day one of this college, this, this pro-Palestinian or anti-Israel or whatever that scam, were saying from day one, oh, this is exactly like 2020. And it quite literally is. And there is even some videos that show the same lady outside of Columbia also doing a BLM protest in Los Angeles or New York several years ago. And he says, in 2020, I asked Lisa Fithian about her roles in organizing riots and violence across the country. She was seen last night instructing rioters at Columbia University. This is the same exact lady. You can pepper spray me. I'm not doing anything illegal. Weren't you on camera on a Zoom call calling for violence? That is you, correct? 
Now that's of course during the BLM riots. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because so many people are talking about how, well, you know, this looks like the same thing as BLM and Antifa, all these violent protests across the country. This looks like the same tactics. Many people are saying that it is the same people. Well, that's because it is literally the same exact people. But it goes on. Billionaire George Soros and his son, Alex Soros have funded nearly $14 million from their Open Society Foundations to Tides, which sponsor activist groups, including the pro-Palestinian Ad Adela Justice Project and others fueling campus protests. Tides has engaged in deceptive business. Duh. I mean, they're all quite literally scam artists. Oh, are you going to? Okay, maybe they'll tell us what kind of deceptive practices they've, you know, dipped their toes into. Tides is engaged in deceptive business practices and has operated in a quasi banking capacity without appropriate regulatory oversight of licenses. The BLM GNF lawsuit says Tides operates with a level of autonomy and minimal regulatory scrutiny that is starkly at odds with the regulatory framework imposed on traditional financial institutions. And here's one of these weirdo BLM grifters standing in front of a weirdo commie BLM mural. According to the lawsuit, Tide has more than $1.4 billion in assets and allegedly acts as a bank, only without banking restrictions. BLM GNF, the National Organization of the civil rights movement founded in 2017 took in tens of millions of donations after the death of George Floyd in 2020. And if you wanted to get incredibly crazy conspiratorial, you might say, mm, well, maybe they had a hand in doing that because they knew they were going to be able to raise a, a whole lot of money. Kind of like the dog walker out in San Francisco who says, oh, oh, somebody sent a blackface doll to my house. How about you donate to my GoFundMe, right? And so the same thing, uh, in, in Houston, I saw a car with the window busted out, like almost in a huge chunk, not just all the little bits of glass, but almost in a huge chunk sitting on the floor and a, a, a parking garage next to it. And I'm kind of thinking, well, yeah, this is unfortunate, but maybe the people who run the parking garage are breaking into cars. Yeah, allegedly. I mean, I, I obviously I can't prove that. I'm just saying, would it be that far fetched? I mean, is is the reality any stranger than fiction at this point? At the time, the group did not have tax exempt status from the IRS and approached the Tides Foundation to help it manage the flood of cash. Oh, well, that's a good problem to have. We got to figure out how we're going to manage all of this race baiting blood money and keep it from the IRS because we, we couldn't even be bothered to register as a not-for-profit or something. And there's loads of loopholes as far as the NGOs and the nonprofits in the Bay Area, Bay Area are concerned. Oh, we're going to help the homeless. And you don't have to show one receipt. Different story. Tides, which takes a percentage of donations to manage a group's funds, gave verbal assurances that it would return the collected money once BLM GNF received taxes and status, the lawsuit claims. In the meantime, it managed donations in a collective action fund that would be accessible to BLM GNF, according to the lawsuit. This, this acronym is getting very tiresome. The BLM scam artist ended its relationship with Tides in 2022, and Tides has refused to hand over the cash, totaling some $33 million. So yeah, now this is... I mean, this is like the Joker movie, right? When you go rob somebody and then he says, well, the boss told me to shoot the guy. And then it clicks. He's like, they wired this thing up with like 5,000 volts. What kind of bank does that? A mob bank. I guess the Joker's as crazy as they say. Where's the alarm guy? The boss told me when the guy was done, I should take him out. One less share, right? Funny, he told me something similar. <laughs> no, no. So he's like, Oh, you know, it's like it's a real Spider-Man meme out there. You guys are all criminals. So obviously nothing's going to be on the level. Instead, Tides, which takes between three and nine percent of, of, of the donations it processes, has sent part of the funds to other BLM groups without the permission of BLM GNF, the lawsuit says. And then, of course, there's the Soros scumbags on June 9th, 2022. Tides officials said Tides had transferred $7.4 million from the collective fund to back 
or fund back to BLMG. It, oh, this is annoying. Instead, it sent part of the cash, $4.75 million, to an unaffiliated BLM chapter in Oklahoma City, the lawsuit says. And I get, I mean, dude, why, I should just start my own weirdo race baiting nonprofit. It seems pretty easy, right? And you collect a whole bunch of money, but instead of get greedy, you could just run away and nobody's going to follow up on it. It is unclear why such a large amount would have been granted to a single city's BLM chapter, the lawsuit says. In a statement to the Post Wednesday, a spokesperson spokesperson for Tide's Foundation called the allegations in the complaint completely false. Yeah, okay. Resources in the Black Lives Matter Collective Action Fund were never intended to be granted to large, well-funded national organizations like the B... <laughs> Like the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, and and of course these, I'm, I can assume that this the Colors Woman in the large mansions and the oh the content creation house is gonna pretend that they have nothing to do with this, or maybe they'll get to it. I don't know, but the waters have been incredibly muddied on purpose. Found, okay, like Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, and were always intended to be granted to local Black Lives Matter chapters. The Tide's statement says BLM GNF's lawsuit seeks to circumvent the intent of the fund's donors and deprive grassroots BLM chapters critical resources for its own benefit. Yeah, well, I mean, what did you expect? Right. I mean, you lay with dogs, you get fleas. Right. I mean, you play in the mud like you. you did, you, did anybody think this was going to be on the level? From day one, it was a completely destructive criminal organization or several criminal organizations under one large umbrella. Who knows? But you couldn't for one split second think that any of this is going to be on the level and you guys should all just, you guys should all take the money you have embezzled and go away. While Tide's website mentions that it offers grant management, an attorney for BLMGNF, said in a statement to the Post that Tides was not authorized to dole out donations earmarked for the BLM, GNF, offshoot groups or local chapters. This is really starting to sound like some mob activity, some gang activity, Bloods, Crips, Democrats, Republicans. It's all the same. You guys are completely despicable. Tides said that it had granted $12.6 million dollars from the support fund to groups including BLM Grassroots, a breakaway group helmed by activist Molina Abdullah. She tried to collect $10 million in a frivolous, frivolous lawsuit for her breakaway BLM Grassroots. Abdullah, who is running as an independent, as independent candidate Cornell West running mate, interesting, and that speaks to my point. It's like, yeah, there's... I mean, there's gangs, political thugs, gangs all over the place. Nobody just keeps to themselves and goes to work, right? It's like you're part of this establishment and you are scamming people as a politician or you are robbing people as a street level criminal or a little bit of both, right? I mean, ask Tiffany Hinyard. Uh, so she's running as an ind as independent candidate Cornell West running mate, which is news to me lost the lawsuit last year and was ordered to pay more than $700,000 in B oh my God. BLM GNF's legal fees and costs. An attorney for the organization cited a June ruling by Los Angeles Superior Court judge who dismissed BLM grassroots claims to any of... Dude, they must... They, this is in like every sentence, okay? Claims to any of BLM GNF's donations. The lawsuit against the Tide Foundation is not just about financial discrepancies, but the principle of rightful ownership and transparency that should govern partnerships in social justice funding, said attorney Byron McLean Wednesday. Well, lie detector test determined that was a lie. I mean, right, are you going to pretend this is about anything more than money? Right, this was, oh, we are going to make sure that we, that we, clean up the way that scam artists scam people for money and donations and black squares or whatever, and pull aside champagne. In a statement to the Post, BLMGNF said they never expected to become victims of unscrupulous business practices and social... What did you... It's all a scam from the start. 
Now you you want to play stupid? You you think we're stupid? Oh, we didn't think this was going to happen when you are quite clearly a scam artist. All of these people are from top to bottom. And it's like, why, why, is it, why am I playing by the rules? Why is anybody playing by the rules? We could just become a scam artist or a politician. But I repeat myself. There's an expectation for Black Lives Matter to challenge systems, break barriers, and uphold the truth. <laughs> what? No matter how uncomfortable. Meaning, no matter how much stuff we burn and destroy, just listen to us. That's what that sentence means. Today, that extends into nonprofit organizations as we call out Tides Foundation and other so-called fiscal sponsors who exploit their role. <laughs> yeah, exploitation is right. It's all over the place. BLM GNF has had its own issues with finances after raking in $90 million in donations for 2020 alone. Here we go. Patrice Cullors, the group's co-founder, then went on a multi-million dollar home buying spree, purchasing. I like how they put the real, the, the, the classic corruption at the bottom with the assumption that nobody's going to really read it. But we all knew from the start that it was completely corrupt. It's completely compromised. There are no adults in the room. So any of these organizations that want to pretend we didn't think we were going to fall victim, bro, you guys are all criminals, right? We, rem we remember the clip from Joker. I guess the Joker's as crazy as they say. Where's the alarm guy? The boss told me when the guy was done, I should take him out. One less share, right? Funny, he told me something similar. <laughs> no, no. Okay, okay. Then went on a multi-million dollar home buying spree, purchasing two homes in Los Angeles and a property in the Atlanta suburbs with an airplane hangar and runway, as first revealed by the Post. Colors denied that she used donations to buy the properties. Well, where'd you get it? You had a job? Were you a waitress? You were a lawyer? You were a CPA? No, it's obviously donations. You had $90 million minimum? Obviously, that's where the money came from. She resigned from BLMGNF a month later. So she got pinched embezzling funds and buying mansions and then just quit which is probably what she should have done right stay quiet you, and then now the organization has come back out and said give us more money colors also signed off on a six million dollar los angeles los angeles mansion to be used as an office for blm gnf an eight million dollar property in toronto for the group's canadian chapter okay well, I, to be honest with you, I can't even make heads or tails of this except to say that a completely corrupt organization is suing another completely corrupt organization.